Hey folks, hope you're doing well, staying safe and healthy and enjoying your summer. My name is Jeff Herwig. I'm a band director and composer from Mercer, Pennsylvania. Um, over the past couple months, I've been adapting a few of my band pieces for Flex Band, um, and I was inspired to do so after I came across the uh, Creative Repertoire Initiative on Facebook. Uh, if you don't know what it is, CRI is a collective of composers and conductors who are committed to creating adaptable band music for the upcoming academic year and beyond as we're trying to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic. You should check it out there on Facebook. Just search for Creative Repertoire Initiative um, or check out their website, creativerepertoire.com. There's some awesome resources on their website, especially for composers that are trying to get started into writing adaptable band music and you don't really know where to start. There are templates available on there from composers like Frank DeKelly and Brian Balmages, and it's super, super helpful. A lot of directors, uh, myself included, aren't really sure what our uh, school year is going to look like coming up. You know, are we going to be teaching in person? Are we going to be teaching online? Or some crazy combination of the two? Are we going to get to work with our full ensembles? Are we going to have to split them up into smaller groups? Or are we only going to be able to work in one-on-one -on -one lessons? So the goal of creating adaptable band music is to provide educators with a piece that can work in any of those settings and work with almost any combination of instruments. I personally chose to write all of my adaptable band pieces uh, using a full flex style, meaning that any voice is playable by any instrument. This makes uh, a performance possible with any combination of instruments. I personally love this idea because I teach in a small school district and if I'm not able to work with my full ensemble and they get split up into different periods. It's not going to be woodwinds one period, brass the next period, and percussion after that. It's probably going to be random assortment of instruments period one, and then another random assortment of instruments period two, and so on. The great thing about full flex pieces is that in period one when I have a flute, a horn, two tubas, and percussionists, I can work on the same piece with them as I do with uh, the group in period two who is four trombones and percussionists. Another thing I really like is that it provides an opportunity to write for what I call bonus instruments. Instruments you wouldn't usually see in band. For example, guitar that would attract some student musicians who aren't usually involved in the band program. I'll elaborate a little bit more on those bonus instruments later on and explain the different types of notation that I included for each to make sure that as many students as possible could participate in making music this school year. The piece I'm going to elaborate on today is called Afraid of the Dark. It's a grade one and a half piece for band and electronics, and it's intended to help introduce younger students to electroacoustic band music. Um, what I've done is taken the full version and condensed it down into only four voices. So at minimum, this piece can be performed by four or more melodic instruments and four or more percussionists. So what I'm going to do is explain the different instrument groupings, show how the score is organized, and give you a peek at what the individual parts look like. So when you open up the score, the first thing you'll see is the instrumentation page. And by looking at it, you can get a pretty good idea of how the instruments are grouped both in the score and in the individual parts. When you look down towards the bottom of the melodic instruments list there, you'll see those two bonus instruments I talked about earlier, the guitar and electric bass. And I'll show you what those parts look like in just a bit. If you check out the percussion section, you'll see that there are only two required parts needed for a performance of this piece. Uh, the original version version includes a lot more percussion, but what I've done is sort of prioritized it and condensed it down so that uh, this is playable by as few as four percussionists. But if you do have a larger percussion section, um, obviously uh, there are more parts to cover there in the auxiliary percussion and timpani. Fast forward to the first page of the score and you'll see right away that this does not look like a traditional band score. Instead you'll see the instrument groupings that are found on the instrumentation page and each of those groupings has parts one, two, three, and four. If you look at part one in each of those groupings, you'll notice that those parts are either in unison or in octaves, and same goes for parts two, three, and four for each of the melodic instruments there. And that goes back to what I said at the very beginning, since this is a full flex piece, all you need to perform the piece at minimum is one student on each part, one, two, three, and four, with any combination of melodic instruments. 
If you have that, then every voice needed to perform the piece is covered. You'll notice that there are a few melodic instruments missing, such as uh, mallet percussion, guitar, and electric bass. That's just simply to save some space. The mallet percussion and guitar simply follow the C treble clef parts that you'll find at the top of the page, and the bass guitar parts match up with the low brass C bass clef parts at the bottom of the page. Here's an example of part two for all the B flat treble clef instruments. So clarinet, bass clarinet, uh, tenor sax, and trumpet. Anytime that a note or a series of notes moves beyond the range for any one of the four instruments included on this part, you'll notice a specific instruction telling which instruments to play which octave. So down in measures 36 and 37, you'll see that the instruction is for the tenor sax to play the higher octave and everybody else to play that lower octave. Now something that my flex band pieces include that maybe not everybody else's do are what I call bonus instruments, which I've talked about a couple times at this point. Um, for this piece, I included uh, guitar and electric bass parts. The reason for including these is to try to include as many students as possible in our band programs. I think that in times like these, it's really important to get as many students participating in band and in music in general as possible. My earliest introduction to music was through guitar and through using tabs and listening uh, to learn how to play songs. I'm sure there are quite a few students in all of our schools who are interested in performing music, but maybe not necessarily with the traditional concert band instruments. So for each of these bonus instruments included in the flex version of Afraid of the Dark, there's both a standard notation version of each part and a tablature notation version of each part. So that's what I've been up to lately. Uh, the flex band version of Afraid of the Dark is available now on my website. And in the very near future, two more flex pieces, uh, Taking Flight, which is a grade three, and Fire Ritual, which is a grade three and a half, will also be available. You can check all of that out at jeffherwig.com slash flexband. So that's it. Let me know what you all think in the comments. And if you think that there's another piece of mine that you believe would translate well to flex band, let me know. 